Hello, I'm Astro. I do a few Nixie projects like uh, Deadnix. It's a tool that can uh, find unused declarations in your Nix code. And I'm happy that these um, diagnostics have now been taken over to TVX and the new language server. But Deadnix can also delete your code, and it is really fast at that. Um, I also happen to run like 60 OpenWRT devices for our neighbors. And for that, I uh, nixified the OpenWRT image builder. Um, I'm really a huge fan of uh, digital sovereignty, running your own stuff, self-hosting. And that's why I'm fond of Mastodon. And we run our own Mastodon instance in a virtual machine. And we run a couple of services in virtual machines, and they are all um, independent of each other. So contrary to the uh, usual NixOS rebuild switch, we want to deploy them independently of each other so that they do not um, affect each other when you deploy them. So in NixOS, uh, is already uh, Nixos containers. They are built in, they are quick to use, and you can use them declaratively, meaning you can put your Nixos container config in your host's uh, Nixos configuration, and it will belong together. But they also work imperatively, and I really like that about them. So I use them a lot for testing out quick changes to uh, Nixos configurations, for developing Nixos modules. But I've been using uh, Linux containers, the LXC project, for a really long time, for, uh, from uh, before Docker even existed. And when the uh, namespace and control group uh, technology in the Linux kernel was in its infancy, I saw some really, really scary bugs that made me doubt if I'm still in the container or already on the host system. And uh, the general wisdom seems to be that the Linux kernel offers a much larger attack surface um, with uh, all the complex APIs compared to virtual machine technology, which is made for secure isolation. So let's leave container tech behind. And when we want uh, virtual machines, NixOS already got us covered. NixOS Rebuild BuildVM spawns a QMU. This is uh, really neat for testing. I use this uh, a lot too. But it's really made for testing. There is a very limited configuration possibility. It's not very optimized, although that is improving over time. And most importantly, there is no uh, setup so that you can run these uh, virtual machines in production. So I um, well, went forward and did my own project. So what is MicroVM? It all started when uh, QMU introduced this new uh, machine model. Usually, you have like a PC from 96 or from 2009. And uh, the new one is the micro VM model, which is supposed to contain much less clutter, uh, no legacy devices, and much less emulated hardware. And there is this uh, special technology called VertIO. This is about optimized device drivers. Here, we no longer emulate this uh, legacy hardware, but we have a protocol that is optimized to just talk to the host uh, virtual machine manager. And this uh, gives you more throughput, higher efficiency, and allows you to run more micro VMs uh, or more virtual machines on your server. And it helps you save the planet. And this brings down the uh, overhead compared to containers. So virtual machines become more of an alternative. So the project lives on that URL. It's a flake, so you can use it via flake ref. And non-flake uh, usage is now possible since this year, thanks to a contributor called Odlama. I cannot really recommend uh, using without flakes, because the nice thing about flakes is they shift the uh, versioning completely into Git. So that means I don't have to deal with nixenv and some uh, version profile zoom links anymore, like you have to do in non-flakes nixos. So the core part of this uh, flake is the micro-VM nixos module. 
And with that, you can configure your virtual machine parameters just with NixOS options. And that allows you to keep the uh, NixOS configuration and the virtual machine settings together, which I find very handy for my use cases. Um, and it turns out there is more than just QMU. Um, so far, the project supports five others. I'm open to other contributions. And I did this because I really like the, to have choice and free software. And NixOS, you can choose between KDE and GNOME and uh, Sway. And with this flake, you can choose your virtual machine manager. I since learned that the correct term is virtual machine manager. The actual hypervisor is uh, DevKVM by the Linux kernel. Um, but I'm not going to break anyone's config by renaming that option now. Um, also, I want to highlight, I really love the, the Rust programming language. Um, I acknowledge that the, the C language has many uh, foot guns, and it's great that newer virtual machine managers are written in Rust, a language that eliminates whole error classes and brings higher quality code. So let's uh, detail two parts of what you need to configure for running internet services in virtual machines. One aspect is uh, network setup. All the uh, virtual machine managers support the uh, tab interfaces of the uh, TunTab driver. And I completely leave it up to the user uh, whether, uh, how, how to deal with that. But some people want defaults, and uh, default or example network setup is uh, documented. Um, there's by now alternatives to tab interfaces. There's this weird Mac VTAP thing, which doesn't give you real proper uh, virtual tab interfaces, but a tab interface is actually attached to an external Ethernet interface, which is kind of an optimization. And all the, or some, uh, hyper, uh, micro, uh, some hypervisors want to have that uh, passed as a file descriptor, and that is uh, kind of weird, but it's all taken care of for you. Um, another interesting network type is user networking, which is supported, unfortunately, only by a QMU and KVM tool. Uh, user networking makes the uh, virtual machine manager accept all the connections from the virtual machine and turn it into uh, ordinary socket calls on the host, so you don't need any uh, network setup on the host to use that, which is really neat for development purposes. The other aspect in configuration is um, storage or, or in ge general persistence, because you want to keep your data. Um, MicroVMNix sets a default. You get a root uh, FS that is mounted as tempfs. So you are, by default, you get ephemeral uh, virtual machines with a clean state after boot. But if you want to have state, you can just configure a root file system or a var file system, or an etc file system, or a home file system, and it will work out of the box. You can uh, give it uh, block devices or just loopback files, which will be automatically created if they don't yet exist. Um, you can configure that, but out of the box, it should just work. And vid.io block is uh, really fast. Uh, but if you need shared access from uh, to the same files and directories for multiple uh, virtual machines. There is uh, actually two file systems that are uh, switched with that uh, proto field. There is the uh, venerable 9P protocol, which is the network file system from uh, Plan 9. And the convenient thing about that is it's built into some hypervisors so that you do not, uh, so they can use it out of the box. The alternative is vid.iofs. That unfortunately requires an extra daemon, which is uh, not started if you run it from a package, but if you run it from system D, it works. I'm, I, I love to hear more ideas about uh, spawning multiple concurrent services in parallel, because there's this new uh, trend called vhost user that allows you to move uh, lots of these vid IO devices into separate processes. So 
for uh, the 9P protocol, here's an example, you just change the protocol. And this is actually a special case, because it mounts the uh, host's Nix store, uh, which is very useful for development, because it will make the uh, virtual machine start up very fast. The alter alternative, if you don't uh, specify this in your configuration, is that you uh, get a squash of S or an arrow of S, which are read-only uh, file systems and they contain your Nix store, and this makes your virtual machine rather self-contained. Um, and I'm very happy to have here that some people want to replace uh, Nix store as stage one and stage two with uh, code that is compiled, so that you will no longer need uh, script interpreters and compilers in your Nix OS system. So that will be very, very good for security. All right, let's get to a first demo. Um, can you read that? Okay, I'm doing a new directory called my micro VM, changing the and the flake ships with a so-called template. So I get now a flake nix, and what does the flake nix do? <laughs> um, all right, it uh, defines a nix OS configuration. This is uh, very minimal, and this nix OS configuration is then used in a package, and this package just gets uh, the runner package out the uh, micro VM configs. And for a quick demonstration, I can just build that. And in my results and link, I have scripts. And these are the scripts to run and shut down the micro VM gracefully. And now I can just run that. Et voila, we get a virtual machine really fast. That last step always takes a bit. Yeah. All right. So this is fine for development, running it from a package. But for production purposes, I really want my stuff to be reboot safe. And for that, I did another NixOS module in that flake. And that's the host flake that you include in the hosts that are supposed to run your micro VMs. So the host flake uh, mainly ships uh, systemd units. And with the add in every name, you can see uh, these are template services. And they will be instantiated for every uh, virtual machine that is there in varlib micro VMs. And the, the general idea behind this is that um, the instantiation and the usage of these uh, virtual machines is very much independent from the host's NixOS configuration. So you don't have to rebuild and switch the host whenever you add or remove the virtual a virtual machine possibly disturbing any other virtual machines that are already running on the host. So and that means all that is left to do configure on the host is to declare which uh, virtual machines should automatically come up on boot. Maybe we can move that to some uh, file system state too. So yeah, there's uh, another script uh, in these uh, packages that I just built, uh, micro VM shutdown, and the system D services will cleanly shut down your micro VMs on stop. So, one way of defining your micro VMs is declaratively because people uh, wished for that and it's supported, but I really uh, discourage from doing that because. Uh, and we heard this in a, in a talk today already. Uh, if you build, if you evaluate uh, multiple NixOS configurations at once, your uh, memory usage will increase linearly, and that is very impractical 
starting with like 10 Nicolas configurations, depending on what machine you're building on. So instead of doing this, um, I've got my own uh, imperative micro VM command. It's just a little shell script. It comes with the host module and it manages the uh, system state and valib micro VM. And then tells you to, um, yeah, start the system, the services. So again, I can demonstrate this. Um, so my laptop is a micro VM host. Oop. And that will already evaluate uh, the NixOS configurations one by one. Uh, I've got one VM here. Um, I can just update it like this. OK, there have been no updates. Ah, right. I need to wait. All right, what I need to do is I need to update the flake, of course. Now my command will me uh, again tell it's outdated. Is it? No. Oh, there have been no updates. But I can just, uh, for illustration purposes, uh, create another micro VM here, um, flake ref, and what did we have before? Example one. Okay, example two. Create. And I have two micro VMs, and I can start them just with the system control command. Whoop. And it's booting. Yeah, I can put example two, too. All right, let's recap. Um, the flake is supposed to, to reflect the versatility of Nix and NixOS, and there's uh, different ways of running a virtual machine. One is uh, from the package, immediately useful when developing as an alternative to the NixOS rebuild uh, build VM or to NixOS containers. When you run a server, when you include the host module, you can uh, include micro VMs declaratively. You can manage them via the uh, micro VM command. And because uh, everything is declared in, uh, together in an XOS config, uh, there's a sample builder that allows you to uh, get the hypervisor, which is, uh, of course, security critical from your own Nix packages, not from the flake that contains the actual micro VM and its NixOS configuration. So that is very useful for uh, running untrusted micro VMs. So the package is, uh, the flake is really not much. It is uh, rather thin, which is intentional. I built it just for myself, and then friends asked me to run it on, on their own home servers. So I wrote some uh, reference documentation. It's uh, a handbook. You could also call it cookbook because it contains all the receipts. But uh, it also documents uh, the interface of the packages, of the uh, micro VM runner packages that are generated. And this, this can be taken as sort of a stability guarantee um, so that you can integrate this with uh, your own systems. Um, there was one funny example. Um, somebody opened a ticket um, asking, how can I have my virtual machines built by CI and then, uh, yeah, deployed? And within hours, they answered it themselves. And the, the snippet, the shell script they ca came up with is identical to what we use to uh, Nix copy from our Hydra. So this works fine uh, for single servers. So you get a, like a fleet of virtual machines on 
on a single host with the host module and that already covers uh, the use case of many people. But sometimes you have like three or more servers um, with the goal of uh, providing high, availab high availability. And I did some uh, experimentation with that. Uh, it's called the Skyflake experiment. It's on my GitHub account. You can try to run this at home, but don't put this into production. Um, the idea is to the, uh, decouple the uh, virtual machines from the hosts and then use uh, a cluster scheduler. So at first I looked into Pacemaker and had packaged uh, that for uh, Nix packages. I wrote the uh, NixOS test for Pacemaker and I'm very happy that it is still being maintained because I found it really, really complicated and hard. And then I found a much easier alternative uh, that is called Nomad. Um, it has a great web interface. The configuration is simple. Unfortunately, it's made by HashiCorp, and I really hope they uh, keep it free. So, originally, it's made for containers. Um, we use it with just the raw exec plugin, so we can just uh, run commands, commands that uh, call Nix. And for storage, so people uh, retain their data, the uh, most simple solution would be, or the, the most uh, all-encompassing solution would be to uh, offer network storage. And Ceph seems to be the uh, popular network file system. But it's very complicated, and I'm going to demo that first. So, I hope you can see that. We've got three virtual machines, which, are, which make up a class cluster. Um, let's inspect that here. Oh, I've got a health warning. Well, it's Ceph. <coughs> now, um, they have a Ceph cluster, they have a Nomad cluster, and now I want to uh, transfer my flake. I have my example flake over here. And how do I send a flake? Any ideas, anyone? Yeah. Git push. And what I'm doing here now, let's make this a bit bigger. What I'm doing here, I'm pushing to an example repository on that example one virtual machine. Um, I'm pushing two branches. Oh, let's make it one and two. These are Nix configurations in this uh, example flake. And what the uh, cluster host is doing now is uh, building the micro VM. I hope it won't take too long. I prepared it so my next store should be warm. Ah, right. And now I've got two, two virtual machines in my cluster. Let's see if we can log into one. Um, eh. I'm running just DHCP, no uh, static addresses. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea after all. All right. Uh. So. I'm on the SkyTest1 virtual machine. Um, I've got some persistent storage. I can now like, save the date. And now I'm going to look into, um, into Nomad to see which uh, host it is running on so I can demonstrate the high availability. It is running on example 3. Um, where do I have it? Where did it go? 
I just lost my virtual desktop. I <coughs> I should have rehearsed that. Ah, all right, here. Yeah. Okay, example three, right? So let's crash that machine. No, this is what, where I was logged in. My SSH is dead. And within like two minutes, um, Nomad should pick it up and restart it on a, another host. Will take two minutes. Um, you can try this at home. It's an experiment. It's not yet uh, much reusable. And we try to run this in a, in a small test cluster, but one day um, we decided to upgrade our NixOS to a new major version, and that contained a major version bump in Ceph, and that was very unfortunate. Oh, it's pinging again. So let's log in. See, our file is still there. Persistent storage on Ceph works. In theory, because when we uh, just upgraded our Ceph to a a uh, new major version, all hell broke loose, and uh, our Ceph cluster was basically fucked. And uh, I don't know, is there anyone here who uses the, the Ceph uh, NixOS modules? Anyone? No, I figured so. Because you, you, you really shouldn't, because a Ceph upgrade needs to be, really, uh, needs to be done really, really carefully. And uh, there's, by the, the, the Ceph project, there's this uh, Docker containers, and there's this uh, Kubernetes project, but I really don't like pulling that in. So I would really love to have a way of uh, upgrading Ceph on NixOS. That is my dearest wish here. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you all to uh, the contributors. Thank you for listening. And check out the project. Maybe it's useful for you. I was surprised that it is already useful for so many people. And uh, thank you for doing a project with documentation so that the rest of us look really, really bad. Um, we don't have a lot of time because uh, we've overrun a little bit, but since it's just Ron, <laughs> who's on next? It wasn't me that said that. <laughs> just think, don't, don't fire me. Then, uh, then uh, well, we have time for a couple of questions. Sure. All right. Down here first. Uh, okay, so thank you so much for the project. I've been um, working on uh, something I call NixOS Dash Epivisor, where I want to like so I, I s like inspired myself a lot from MicroVM. I'm throwing away the multi backends, like just keeping Cloud Epivisor, keeping like very opinionated. But you know the uh, Spectrum OS project? Yes, they're very sophisticated, I think. Yes, um, and so, so like I, I've been wondering. Um, like so recently, you, ju you just mentioned the problem of Nix, re Nix re rebuild switching uh, a Ceph cluster. Um, I feel like uh, for things like um, VMs, manage VMs by a host, by a Nix West host, we don't have all the systemd targets that can understand how to actually redeploy correctly a VM, how to do, uh, how to do all the, um, the neat magic to uh, drain uh, VMs to um, over VMs, uh, do the traffic management and all that stuff. And I feel like it would be interesting to like start a working group on how to build NixOS as like a, a place where you can build an appliance uh, for hypervisor like Proxmox, x and pushing kind of the boundaries because there are so much nice technology you've been using in that project. And I feel like why aren't, aren't we seeing, uh, seeing similar things out there, right? Like yeah, yeah. Over, on, on the top of other stuff. There's a couple of things built into uh, NixOS, there's uh, Spectrum OS, there's the App VM, and we, we just had a lightning talk today about uh, Mozilla VMs. I like that a lot. 
Du? Is it uh, supported to run a micro -VM, uh, VM virtual machine inside a micro VM virtual machine? Nesting is possible with some hypervisors. I mean, uh, in the in the Skyflake example, it's with uh, QMU, and in these QMUs, other micro VMs were running. Thank you. This looks like legit amazing. Uh, like I, I I've written so many hypervisors somehow, and like this looks like so much better than anything I got my hands on. I have two questions, sorry about that, but so it seems to be short. So first one is, do you support dynamic uh, state change for the running VMs, like changing the number of CPUs that are plugged into VM and RAM? There's uh, no, no changing of uh, CPUs, no much hot, hot plugging. Um, PCI pass-through is uh, possible, but only statically. I have some dynamic scripts for ballooning, that means uh, resizing the memory of the micro VM, but uh, I don't use it myself, actually. I bring my own management of the NIC source within the VM, so like if I already have some infrastructure to manage what's inside the VM, would it just work or there would be some issues in that? Could you rephrase that? Manage so uh, if I manage the VM state uh, on the host with micro VMs, but manage the NIC source within, so like I have like scripts already to build the NIC source within the VM, and I want to reuse those and ignore the part of micro VMs that builds NICs within the VM. Would that work? Uh, it's really designed for, for being built on the host, but you can add a writable store overlay so you can still build stuff in the VM and you could also uh, switch to the new profile. But that uh, writable store overlay has some problems uh, because it has amnesia when you reboot the virtual machine to be fixed. Um, so you mentioned the issue of when you use micro VMs declaratively and you're, you're evaluating many, many different Nixos configurations that the memory scales linearly. However, it's really ergonomic to, as a developer experience, to actually define everything in a single host and be able to connect it all very nicely. Do you think there's some middle ground that can be done where you can kind of have some of the bef benefit of declaring it declaratively like that uh, without the massive memory usage during eval? I myself not, but I saw some some nice idea today in that uh, app VM, Firefox app VM uh, lightning talk. They uh, pass they pass some configuration data as uh, parameters in uh, QMO uh, firmware variables. That would be one approach. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Oh yes, all right. Last one. Hi. <coughs> Sorry, I saw for that maybe sneaky question. Um, uh, we share a space together. <laughs> so uh, the, is there, for example, for a bigger project, um, Proxbox, for example, was uh, a word here. Uh, for bigger projects, f f uh, is there a possibility uh, or is there a company that is providing kind of commercial support or something like that? Ah, I myself don't have time for that anymore, but I'm very happy to announce that Numtide is offering commercial support for the project. All right. Thank you so much, Astro. Thank you.